attendance and chronic absenteeism. Does this keep you up at night? Do you walk into your school every day and you're asking yourself, how do I attack this, reverse this? How do I get kids into school? Let's talk about that today. When they see me, they know that every day when I'm breathing, it's, it's, it's for us to go farther, you know? Every time I speak, I want the truth to come out. You know what I'm saying? Every time I speak, I want to shiver. You know, I don't want them to be like, they know what I'm going to say because it's polite. They know what I'm going to say. And even if I get in trouble, you know what I'm saying? That ain't that what we're supposed to do. It's, I'm not saying I'm going to rule the world or I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. And that's our job, is to spark somebody else watching us. We, we might not be the ones, but let's not be selfish, and because we're not going to change the world, let's not talk about how we should change it. I don't know how to change it, but I know if I keep talking about how dirty it is out here, somebody going to clean it up. And now, he's been promoted. His job, principal. What's going on, everyone? This is Uche Njoku, <coughs> sneaker principal, and... um. We're going to talk about something that uh, is hard to talk about because I feel there's, there's no exact science to this. But, however, there are strategies that can be put in place to address this particular thing. Um, and the thing I'm talking about here is attendance, school attendance, to be, to be exact. Um, as you all know, this is my th- I'm at my third school as a, as a principal. And I've worked at several schools where attendance was like the core conversation. Um, it was the the uh, the one thing that was being tracked probably above all things. And I'll tell you why. If kids are not in school, how do you teach them? If kids are not in school on a daily basis, how do you improve schools, you know, um, uh, performance? It's virtually impossible. So you have to have kids in school. So, but then when you talk about attendance, we also have to talk about the other side of the coin, which is, which is the chronic absenteeism. Those kids who are so, who've been out of school for so many days that now um, it's in the stages of being chronic. Um, and I'll tell you this. If your school is not really thinking or doesn't have a strategy and plan that's working, you're going to be struggling for years to come. So in this episode of the Sneaker Principal Podcast, I wanted to share with you my strategies. Um, it's not an exact science, but I also feel there are scientific mathematical things that can be done to really move the way we see attendance, at least for individual schools. So first of all, let's, let's start off by defining what is chronic absenteeism. So I'm going to look at my notes. So I'm not being rude, not looking at you on the camera for those of you who watch this on video. But um, chronic absenteeism is when students miss 10% or more of the school year. It's a silent, epi- it's a silent epidemic affecting schools nationwide, impeding academic and social development. Whether it's due to illness, family issues, or lack of engagement, we need to address this issue head on. I love the way that was that was that's well framed because it is <laughs> it is an epidemic, you know, especially when it's not addressed and allowed to just happen. And um, furthermore, according to recent data, millions of students fall into the category of being chronically absent. This is a call to action for us all in education. So if you're watching this right now, this is a call to action. Because again, a lot of schools are talking about attendance. A lot of schools are doing a lot of things. My question is, are you being effective in what you're doing and how you're doing and how you're doing it? Um, so first off, the role of attendance data. So data, 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 data. A lot of schools don't truly understand their own attendance data. And um, I'm not saying that I I am the expert at it, but however, we are just looking at numbers, percentages, and 
and we look at the heat maps and we're like, what classes, what cla- what what section, what class has the most att- uh, attendance issues? And I believe it's a little bit more than that. Heat maps are great. You know, they make you feel like you're being productive. Percentages, you know, gives you something to look look at. But for me, the data that I that I really like to look at is the actual individual student. You know, it's like in business. You know, if you're trying if you're trying to sell something, you have a, you have widgets, you have a product. You're not just going to go to the market and start selling to everybody. No, you're going to target. You're going to say, who is my customer? What are what are the tendencies? What are they looking for? What are the, what are the needs? What are the things that I know that make them the most ideal person for this product? And I say using the same mentality for for, for um, attendance is very important because um, we have to think about who the individual student who's not attending is the individual first, and looking at their daily records, uh, their their tardiness, even when they're in school. I they get into school on time? I mean, I'm sorry, I they get into the classes on time? You know, understanding the patterns of the, of, the, of the individual's absence. When are they absent the most? What's happening in that child's household that, that's causing them to be absent? You know, and, um, and not only that, now with the child, the parent. Because too many schools are thinking about, oh, this child is not in school. You know, let's, let's, let's incentivize the child to be in school. But my belief is, if you don't know what what the motiv- the motivating factor is, or the demotivating demotivating factor is for the actual parent, the person who's actually in charge of that child, then what are, what are we talking about here? Like I've heard conversations about how do we incentivize elementary school kids come to school? Um, majority, the vast majority of elementary school kids have no control over themselves to get to school. Is the parent? who make sure to get to school. So what's going on with the parent? Do they live too far? Are they, are they having, I mean, are they having child care situations? I mean, I mean, issues, you know, are, are, are our students helping with that? You know, we have kids who come to school late. Are they dropping off their, uh, their siblings? You know, all these little things we have to understand, paint a picture and to, to have a clear understanding because if we're not doing that, the numbers mean nothing, you know? The incentives in spending, I know schools who spend thousands of dollars for incentives, gift cards and this and that, and they even hire more people. But I'm like, but the numbers are still wanting because you're not addressing the actual issue, which is knowing why. Elementary school, you have to figure out what's going on with the parents. Not as, as, as judge and jury, but as a partner, how can we support? Middle school, same thing. You think because the kid is obviously a bigger body that they're in control of themselves? No, it's still parents, guardians. High school is where it becomes a little bit different. Because now when you're talking to a 17, 18 year old, they may, they, they may very well have full autonomy. Then you have to figure out how to address their needs as well. What's the reason for them not coming to school? How can we reverse that? But again, I'm going back to saying this. You have to understand the individual, the person, the stakeholder, the main person who has control over that child being there. But the other thing too is, as you're collecting data, it has to be accurate. There's nothing worse in the world than not knowing the numbers behind that individual. Because I'll tell you right now, I've had parents who, when you speak to them, and we say, your child's not going to school. Okay. And it turns into a back and forth. Your child has to be in school, but I have this, I have that. But rather sitting with a parent and saying, let's look at your child's collective data. Number of days they've been absent, their grades, this is how they're performing, this is how they're falling behind. And you show the parent these things, all of a sudden parents are like, wait a minute, I didn't think it was that bad. Because often, if you don't know the numbers and you're not sharing with the parent, like the actual detail of that child, you're just, you're just asking for a back and forth. You know, data, data, data is, is the ultimate, ultimate intervention strategy. You know, once we know where everyone falls, then we can start talking about solutions. And, and, and that's the goal. Talk about solutions. How do we reverse this? It's a child who starts off the year with, and they've already hit 10%. 
the key now is to minimize that that number from growing. You know, and the way you do that is you you have to strategize around the data with that with that family, and um, or and if it's a high school kid with a high school kid, but also, again, I'm going to repeat: it's about coming down to the why, what is causing this, and what do we need to do to reverse it. Um, once we have the data, it's, it's it, we have to an- analyze it. You know, like I said earlier, you have the data. You have to know the data yourself so you know how to u- utilize it in the conversations with, with the families. Um, but now, one of the things that I know, I've seen this over and over again, <clears throat> that is not done right. And I hope I, hope I, can, art- I can articulate this. When, we, when you're only looking at percentages, you're only looking at, you know, um, a list of students who are not there and not looking at the, at the individual. One of the things you tend to do, and this is a major misstep, is you, you kind of like attack the list. You know, you, you, you put boots on the ground. Let's go find those kids, bring them to school. Let's get them into the building. And the problem with that is when you're attacking that list, you're ignoring the bigger list, the rest of the kids. A lot of parents, a lot of schools will look at, oh my God, these are our chronically absentee students. <clears throat> We're attacking them. And as that list, as you're, as you're trying to reduce that list, you know, it's getting bigger because there are other kids who are coming to school every day who are starting to like fall behind themselves. So you're always attacking the chronically absentee or the absence list and you're not addressing those who are here every single day. Collect data. Why are the kids who come to school every day, why are they coming? What excites them about going to your school? What is it about being in school that excites them? Because one thing I want to tell you, but I'm not a believer that <clears throat> that you must come to school and that's it. What is there at the school to make sure the kid comes? If the kid is, if the kid is, 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 if your school is not addressing the social emotional needs, it, it's not it doesn't have an exciting academic program. There are not extracurricular activities. The things that make school fun for them, or even better yet, safe. That your chronically absentee less is going to increase. Is, it is going to increase. Okay, so um, those who are watching the video, something weird happened, but um, hopefully I, I'll go back and make sure the audio is co- correct. So I was saying, um, when it comes to students being in school, you have to address that. You have to make sure that you're creating a climate where kids are being engaged every single day. And I was mentioning about safety. Um, there is a huge correlation between school climate, and attendance. You can be fighting to get kids into your school building, but if your school space is not safe, where kids feel like when I come here, mentally, physically, spiritually, I always say spiritually too, because it all connects mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional. If those four things are not connected to each other, and your school space is a space where kids feel unsafe, guess what? A simple text message that, that, that there's going to be a fight tomorrow and kids are not going to come to school that, that next day. I'm telling you, look at your, look at your school data and, and, look, and look at the days that there's been fights or there's been es- escalated um, um, events that create a safety issue in your school and look what your attendance was that day. In 2023, nothing happens in isolation. Because of this thing right here called the cell phone and social media, most incidents have already, I don't want to say been pre-planned, but have already been initiated before they've been happening in school. And because it's happening on on social media, most of your kids already know that something's going to happen, especially middle schools and high schools. Kids know. And people think that all kids want drama. Most kids are trying to run away from it. So if your school has drama... Guess what happens now? Those days where <clears throat> there's, a, there's, an ish, there's an incident or whatever the case may be, you might notice your attendance was low that day from the jump. 
because all of a sudden, what you're not realizing, certain kids are like, oh, I have a tummy ache today, mom. I, I don't want to go to school. I'm not feeling well. Because they don't want to be in the middle of the, of the mess that, that's being planned for that day. Or things that are escalating. Things like bullying. Things like just rowdy hallways or classrooms that are out of control. Who wants to be there? So while you're trying to get kids into your school, is your school a space where the kids want to actually be in? Ask yourself that question. Okay, So you have to address the data <clears throat> from, <clears throat> from the actual school space. What is happening during the day? day to day because I'm telling you there's a correlation between your school climate and kids not wanting to be in school so if you can fix that then just what happens you have more kids who are in school and those kids who are not in school you can address them to see what's stopping them from coming and what's stopping them from coming better not be the school itself if the school itself is the problem you will have absentee absence at an attendance issue and a chronically absentee issue as well. So, um, and I'll, I'll share this quick story. My, my, my school right now, MS224, District 7 in the South Bronx, when I first got there, um, the numbers were, I mean, the, the, attendance, the attendance part was moving in the right direction. The chronically absentee part was out of control, like over 40%. So think about that. Over 40% chronically absentee, that is insane. But the one thing that I saw that was like, okay, this had to change, was climate. There were, there were a lot of issues happening in the school, a lot, of, a lot of social media drama, a lot of kids that didn't feel safe. And how do I know this? We did a survey. We did a survey of our kids as, as we were writing our, our um, comprehensive educational plan for 2023-24. And when we did a student survey, it was in there. Kids were saying that bullying, the fights, the, the inability to learn in the classroom, the kids who were distracting, all this stuff was, imp was impeding their learning. So why, did, why wouldn't we have a, 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 a chronically absentee issue? Because most kids don't want to sit at home. <laughs> Let's be honest here. But also most kids don't want to be in a space where they don't feel safe. You know, or or the, or they're feeling traumatized by by all the things that are happening in that space. So, that is something to be needs to be addressed as far as re reversing or I don't, you know I don't even believe in reversing. If you're already in a problem, then you have to reverse it. But how do we start with the school year, creating a space where we don't have to eventually reverse chronically absenteeism, where we have a space where kids are coming to school every day. And if they're not there, it's because there are very clear reasons that we can address and support them with. And the reason, again, should not be the school itself. Now, forming an attendance team. Attendance team, attendance team. So every, almost every school that, or any, every school system that has attendance issues has an attendance team. And the attendance team is a, is a group of um, of stakeholders in the school. So we're talking about administrators, we're talking about teachers, counselors, and even parents, you know, who are part of having conversations on how do we support students with poor attendance? How do we, you know, move kids off the chronically absentee list? Okay. And this is how you collect data and this is how you attack the data from this team. Um, but I'll tell you this, I also feel like a lot, a lot of schools you have their their moving based on compliance. They have the attendance team, and they're attack again. Like I said earlier, they're attacking the absentee students by not really addressing the school culture, and um, and one of the things that as a school leader that I I hold very important to me is in that attendance team. We have to be very strategic. We have to know why we're there. And what is it exactly we're doing? So everything I've said so far are things that are discussed within my attendance team. Um, from the jump, from the first attendance meeting, we knew which kids, first of all, no, no. First of all, we knew what the number was. Based on our population, what was the danger zone? Okay, what was the number of kids absent every day that put us in a, in a space where we would fall as a school into having poor attendance. No. 
And for us, that number was about 15 kids. Every day, when, if you have 15 kids that are absent, our numbers look crazy. Um, if we have over 15 kids. And some of them might say, well, now, now you're just using the numbers. You don't really care about kids being there. You're just, using, you're just using the numbers to make sure you guys look good. Yes, and also no. Because we know who those 15 kids are. And because we know who those 15 kids are, we're calling every day. Okay, At my school, every day that a kid is absent, even if we know why the kid is absent, if even if the kid is sick at home, there's a touch point every single day. My parent coordinator will call. If Jamal is absent today and we call mom and mom says he's not feeling well, the next day we'll call again. Oh, he's still not feeling well. The next day we call again. Oh, he was in the hospital. Like we want to know on a day-to-day basis, how's the child doing? But now it goes beyond just attendance. It's about knowing what's happening with that child, with that family. Oh, he missed the, the train this morning. Oh, okay. Is there another train they can take? Like this is this is the, the conversation because we are trying to help also parents who are in that space of having children who are chronically absent or better parents who are chronically absentee parents, you know, from as far as the kids coming to school, engaging them every day, coming up with a solution, you know, and what we found is the more we talk to parents, the all of a sudden kids are coming to school. But sometimes the parent is like, you know, I'm tired of hearing from, you know, from the parent coordinator or from the assistant principal or the, or the guidance counselor. So those 15 are easy, are easy to like digest. And now when you have, like in my case, I have an attendance team with three counselors, okay, who split up the whole entire school. So guess what? Each of those counselors has their workload of students. That is their student they're reaching out to. Then we have a family worker who now we can say, hey, this child now is in the danger zone. So now the family workers do home visits. But we're managing that list of 15. And, but then at the same time, we have a chart of kids who were on the cusp of potentially being chronically absentee. And we can watch them. We have a threshold when the child gets to a certain percentage. Oh, we are, we're there like in tier two, about to hit tier three, meaning tier three chronically absentee. Oh, now we're attacking those kids before they go to that list. Hey, what's going on? Oh, we need to call this. We need to make sure we're reaching out and talking to them and we're sharing the numbers and we're having those conversations. And what happens, this becomes very organic. Let me tell you how organic it is. Every day, my attendance team, I have, I have a, uh, uh, school aide who is amazing. She, she does the attendance every day. She collects the data. She gets a laptop out and looks who's not here. And, and then she makes sure that our attendance is correct. Because a lot of times, if you have a big school, even a small school, kids walk in and we miss them on an attendance sheet. And then all of a sudden we think our numbers is much higher. I can tell you this. There has not been a day since the beginning of the school year where we've missed a kid who's been in the building. We are tracking that list all the way till the end of the day to make sure that our numbers are correct. But even with our earliest numbers, we start to make phone calls. And sometimes we have parents who say, no, no, the child is there. The child is here. Do we have to go find that child? Oh, this child walked in late and kind of snuck around the main office. So they, they didn't, we didn't catch them in attendance and they went into the classroom, okay? And we saw that was an issue. Then now we have tracking, we have section sheets. So now every period, teachers are able to uh, marking kids present or absent or late in all their classes. And these sections just go from room to room. So my school, they can pull that, that folder up and look at it to, as, she's, as she's searching for students to make sure that our attendance is accurate. And again, it makes, makes, her, makes us hyper-focused knowing that this is the kids, the 15 or hopefully less kids that we have to track and target every single day. So our guidance counselor making targeted calls, our family worker making targeted visits, our parent coordinators calling every day, and we are in control. I will tell you this, my attendance team has, we have a, 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 a group chat on our phones where we were asking the other day, what is our number? What is our number? What's our number? Oh, we're 17. Oh, we found two more kids. We're at 15. Oh my God, we're at 13. Oh my God, we're at eight today. And in there, we're dropping emojis and, and, and gifs and we're celebrating because also we understand how important this number, these numbers are. It's not just for compliance. And we know kids are in school and they're learning. And then guess what happens now? We can, we're also tracking improvements. Oh my God, this kid came off the chronically absentee list. You know, and we're controlling that. We have we have a, a, a spreadsheet that we share every meeting. We meet every Tuesday. And that spreadsheet, 
there's there's a red section and yellow section. Yellow section is the section that we want kids off that list so that they're not trending towards being chronically absentee. And the red section is, is, is small. It's shrinking every time we meet. Sometimes it bumps up maybe one or two kids and because we're attacking those kids and then we find out those a kid was sick or something happened. But again, we're tracking everything and we're taking it personal. And that's one thing I love. My attendance team takes attendance personal. We celebrate and then, I'm telling you right now, there are days where we're like, oh, today was 20 kids that were absent and we are bummed out. Like literally, I have to go into group chat and say, guys, you know what? I still appreciate everybody and what we're doing here. Tomorrow we have to hit it hard. Because I can actually see people in their faces, see people are texting or the group chat is quiet and people feel like really like, man, today was a bad day. And for me, that tells me today was a good day because we are pushing we we're taking this personally. So, um, and that's the thing about the, the attendance team, okay? In your attendance team, you should be discussing specific cases, the particular students, families. You should be brainstorming interventions. You should be ensuring that everybody knows their role. Everybody knows what their role is in, in supporting these families and, and come up with uh, getting answers so we, can, so we know how to best support them, okay? This is collaborative problem solving at its best okay if your attendance team is the principal or the ap or, or whoever just talking to everybody and it's not we're not and you guys are not collaborating and people have information they're sharing and they're strategizing then you don't have an attendance team you just have a meeting you just have a meeting you know and again that's not going to move anything um so now, strategies, strategies for improvement. So I'm, I'm, I'm that person, and I'm sure you've, you've seen this, you've heard this so far from this episode. Um, I was once asked about incentives. What are your incentives? And this was my, this was my answer. The school, is the, the school is the incentive. And they looked at me like, wait a minute, but, you know, what, you know I mean, gift cards, T-shirts, and I'm like, the problem with that is once you incentivize school in that capacity, certain kids will only come because you're giving them stuff and it's not about the learning. And I do, I do believe in celebrating, you know, attendance or, and I do, I believe in that, but that's old school, perfect attendance and all oh, that's, that's wonderful. But again, like I said earlier, if you're not creating an environment where the kid actually wants to be there, then what are you doing? If you don't have you created a school environment where the kids feel safe there, then what are you doing? If you haven't created a school environment where in the classrooms, kids are engaged and they feel like they're learning and they're growing, what are you doing? To me, that's the incentive. That is the incentive. You know, and uh, yes, the the school store and, and some schools do like, you know, attendance bucks and, you know, all that kind of stuff, attendance currency, that is cool. But I think once you have created the, the ultimate climate for learning in your school, then that other stuff becomes like the icing on the cake. It shouldn't be the cake, though. It's the garnish. It's the stuff that makes things look good. And that's my thing with, with, when it comes to um, incentives. Um, now, mentorship or success mentors, very important. But I'll tell you this, a success mentor is everyone in the process of supporting that child or that family in getting to school there. That's a success mentorship. And it shouldn't just be one person. Everybody's a mentor in some capacity. As the principal, when I see the kid coming to school, or I see the parent, I'm giving them a high five, and, and I'm, like, I'm like, and I tell parents, yo, we're family, and give them a hug. Making them feel good knowing that here at this school, my child is seen, my child is appreciated. That's my role as a, as a success mentor. You know, my team members who go through the data and they look into the data and they're, and they're supporting the rest of the team, understanding what the trends are, those are success mentors. But they're giving, they're giving us tools to now apply to the child or, the, or specifically, in my case, the individual families. The guidance team who have taken ownership because this child is one of the kids I, I support as a guidance counselor. And them reaching out and knowing and, and actually truly knowing and being partners with parents, that's another success mentor. 
So for me, I see the whole entire team as success mentors because we're empowering families and children to be successful in getting themselves to school and learning and growing. And some people have huge teams. My thing is I like my teams more and intimate because, again, this is like, you know, you guys know I was in the Marine Corps, so this is like a fire team. Everybody has their role. We have, we have the weapon specialists. We have, we have the, the communications. We have the medic. We have all these people. But then we all also know that if needed, we can all, you know, um, inter- intersect inter- and, 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 and support each other in, in, in doing this work. Um, let me see here. What am I? I'm just going through my notes right now. See, so there's anything that I'm missing here. And and of course, engaging families is key. Many times, chronic absenteeism is symptoms of a larger issue. Like I said earlier, it's just figuring out what the issue is, like what's stopping this from happening. And often, if you know, then you can provide support, so you can you know see or work with the family to figure out like how do we make sure we can support you. I've had situations where where literally. You know, families might be in the shelter, and the shelter that they're in is other across the other side of, of the city, and that's where they're living right now. And then it's like, okay, now, how do we support that family? Because not coming to school is not an option. So I have kids who might show up to school at 10 o'clock, and it's like, because they're coming from very far, or the parent, that's the earliest parent can get into school. I'm not beating the parent up for that. I'm like, okay, now, how do we make sure when the child gets here, you know, the work that was missing, we can get that for them. We can get them the tutoring or whatever needs to happen, but they're in school, okay? And these are the things, like leading with compassion, supporting families with compassion is also very important. Some schools will just will literally beat a parent or families over the head. You're not here. What are you doing? You're never in school. Like, when I hear that, I'm sorry. I'm calling you into my office. We're going to have a conversation. But at the end of the day, you know, you don't, we don't always know until we know what's really happening. And that's how you have to figure out what's happening. And when a child shows up, I don't give the child has is is constantly disruptive. I celebrate the child coming. I give them the high five. I give them the pound. Like, you know, good to see you today. I might crack a joke, you know, something to make them smile. But again, I know that a lot of times children are disruptive in school because there's something about the environment, something that's happening that makes them feel unsafe. So if kids feel safe, they'll come to school. If parents are if parents are supported and they, and they know they're alone, they will work with the school to make sure they get their, their child to school, and that's that is that is the the the, the mission here. Um. So, so yeah, so these are the things that I think about when it comes to to attendance, and and I'll tell you this: if if your if your attendance team is not it's not popping, it's not doing its thing. Let's start, let's start with, with, with baby steps. Start collecting and analyzing your data from the lens of the individual child and their family. What is the need? What is, what is preventing attendance from being a priority or what's causing attendance to drop? And just not being in school is not the answer. What is, what is it exactly that's causing this? And make sure you have the right person Focusing on on that piece and split it up. Don't have one person do one to do. You have a list of, of 20, 30 names. One person is making those phone calls. Split it up. Make sure everybody's playing their role. And if everybody's, if everybody's playing their role, guess what happens? Then you're able to really attack the issue. But if everybody's not playing their role, I'm telling you right now, um, it becomes daunting. And you don't want this to be daunting. You don't. You don't want. But remember, your attendance team people also have other jobs they have to do to keep the school running. So if you're not splitting the load the right way, you're, gonna, you're going to struggle, and, and they're going to struggle. Then the attendance meeting becomes that space that they don't want to be at. And I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of people who are part of attendance teams that do not like going to attendance, attendance team meetings. It should be a place where anybody walks in, they're, ready, they're excited to come in and share new information because that information is going to reverse the attendance issue at your school or, or keep your attendance amazing. Because even when you have great attendance, your attendance team is, is, is your preventative measure to make sure it doesn't go in the wrong direction. So, um, yeah. Again, I've said it in other episodes, if you ever, if you listen to this episode and you're like, man, that was too much, or man, I have more questions, feel free, drop me a message in the messenger. 
um, wh- whichever platform, whether you're YouTube or LinkedIn, wherever you see this, drop me a message. Let me know. Um, let's talk. You know, let me support you. Let me answer your questions because, again, these things that I talk about in this space, it's not just for me to talk to just put out there to the world and talk about. It's really about supporting people from my experiences, supporting leaders from my experience. Um, so you don't have to repeat the same mistakes that I've made or that a lot of leaders make. And again, this is not a one size fits all. This is not the only solution, but this is what's worked for me right now as a school. Uh, we are, we are at 90% attendance. Not happy about that. My goal is 97 and that might take some time to get to, but the thing is we are, we are seeing some of the highest attendance as a school that we've seen in many years. The one I have people on the team who are, who are telling me, I've been here for five years. I've never seen attendance this good. You know, that tells, that says a lot to me. That says we're the right, in the right, moving in the right direction. And, um, and again, I'll tell you the days that we drop under 90 people's moods like sour. And because we know we're making, we're doing the work and we know how important this is. So, um, Again, don't don't think I'm sitting here saying, "Oh my God, my tennis is so great." This is a ninety you now, because I'm always thinking about that ten percent. Like, what what do we do to to close the gap with those ten percent? But um, but uh, but I'm also proud of my team because we are we are pushing, we're we're improving on a daily basis, and if we keep doing what we're doing, I, I can only imagine where we'll be a year from now, or two years from now, when when we have really perfected what we do and how we do it to make sure that we're supporting families, not just hunting for kids to be, to pull them into the school building. All right, y'all. This is Uche and Joker Sneaker Principal. Thank you again for listening to this longer than expected episode. But I hope it was helpful to you. And again, I look forward to hearing from you in the, in the comments or you can message me directly. And until um, next time, all right? Be well. <laughs>